My name is Tony Hyman. I'm a director of Max Planck Institute in Dresden, in Germany. And I'd like to talk to you today about organization of cytoplasm. So one of the key questions in biology that we're all interested in is the following. How does complexity arise to molecular interactions? The things we're interested in, such as cells, are often five or six orders of magnitude bigger than the molecules that make up. So if you have a molecule over here on this uh, uh, scale, the cells, for instance, are 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6 uh, orders of magnitude bigger than the molecules they make up. So what are the rules by which these molecules can interact to create these very complex structures which are so much bigger than they are themselves? You can't think about the cytoplasm as a set of 800 proteins floating around um, where to, <coughs> and, and somehow organizing a cell division. That's not how we think about the cell. That would be much too complicated. Rather, what we do as cell biologists, and generally as biologists, is we think about biology as a hierarchy of organization. So here I've shown you one hierarchy of organization, which is you can see that proteins themselves form protein complexes, as an example. And that appears to be one of the first levels of organization under which uh, proteins function in the cell. Most proteins appear to function in protein complexes with other proteins. And in fact, some of the protein complexes are very, very sophisticated with many, many different proteins. The ribosome, for instance, has over 100 proteins. Um, and so here are some crystal structures of uh, ribosomes and nuclear pore complexes. And molecular machines tend to be protein complexes that are very complex. And that's one way that we can think about how to organize the cytoplasm, which is to say, not what the function of individual proteins are, but what are the functions of different protein complexes. If we go back to our scale axis that I introduced at the beginning, if you remember I talked about the fact that we have proteins over here, and how are they organized to make cells which are many orders of magnitude bigger than the proteins themselves? What you can see, of course, is that one of the, the ways that we think about that is how the proteins are organized into these complexes. And you can see that helps to bridge the scale gap. But what about this big area here? It turns out in this area, there are also a lot of complexes about which we understand very little. And these are called compartments or else organelles. And how protein complexes organize into compartments is much less well understood than how proteins are organized into protein complexes. And these various different structures of things like centrosomes, kinetochores, proteins, uh, nuclear bodies. And these are large non-membrane bound compartments uh, where many, many different protein complexes live together and undergo particular aspects of cell physiology. So for instance, there are centrosomes shown here. And here I have kinetochores illustrated by electron microscopy. And these are all large, non-membrane-bound complexes, um, uh, compartments, which contain many, many different protein complexes. And for, let me show you some movies, some other ones, such as the cortex, which is the outside layer of the cell. That, as an example, is also a compartment, um, a very interesting compartment. Then, for instance, we can look at centrosomes and chromosomes are other compartments in the cells. And you can see here a movie of mitosis where we've labeled the centrosomes and the chromosomes the GFP, and you can see them going through mitosis. These are also large compartments which are organized from many, many different protein complexes. The key thing about these compartments is first they have no obvious structure when you look by electron microscopy. A second important thing about these compartments is that they turn over quickly. So in other words, if you do a photobleaching experiment, then the components in, the, in these compartments will exchange with the cytoplasm very, very quickly. And I'll show you some examples of that in the subsequent slides. But the protein complexes that make up these compartments tend to turn over very slowly in the order of hours. So the protein complexes I discussed with you earlier in this segment are very, very stable. You can isolate them in test tubes. Some of them you can just leave sitting around in a test tube for many, many days, 
and they'll be stable. So they don't turn over very fast. But the protein complexes in these compartments exchange very, very rapidly. So we come back then to our scale here. What I've done to introduce this problem is to show you how we can go from the proteins all the way to the cells and bridge that scale by understanding the organization of different compartments. And one of the ways we think about that is emergent properties, which is something you may have been hearing about, which is emergent properties of collections of individuals. So the proteins themselves are individuals, and the collective, as an example, are protein complexes. So we can try and understand what properties of protein complexes emerge from the collection of proteins that make up those protein complexes. The same we can ask with protein complexes. We take all those protein complexes, we put them together in like a centrosome or a nuclear body, we can ask what activities emerge from the combined activity of all those protein complexes. And we can go further, of course, to ask, now we have all the compartments, we put them together in a cell, how does the property of the cell emerge from the organization of those compartments? How do they actually work together? And then, of course, we could ask the same thing in tissues. Cells collectively work together to make tissues. And the important thing about this is that at each level, at each scale, we have to use different ways to think about it. We need different microscopy. We need different theory um, to understand each one of these different scales. And that's what made biology so interesting, <clears throat> is that each one of these scales, we have to think of new ways to do it, um, try and develop new microscopy techniques, and try and think up new theoretical ways to think about how these different organizational structures work.